Members of the LAPD are caught on film punching a man who is skateboarding on the wrong side of the street. KTLA actually has this report and they show footage of this beating. Let's take a look. The four of them pulled him down and they were handcuffing him and then they were like beating on him. And I was like screaming because I thought they were going to kill him. And then we were telling him, hey, you don't have to do that. He's already down on the ground. Leave him alone, you know. And they were just, and the poor kid was just like not knocked out with blood coming out of his mouth. And he looked like he was out. There were about three or four officers on top of my son. And then an officer comes into view, comes into view, gets down on the ground and hits him in his face. And it's something that you can hear on the tape. The, the results are is that he has a broken nose, he has a broken cheekbone, and he has a concussion. How does it escalate to that point when someone is skateboarding on the wrong side of the street and you need four police officers on top of him to beat him? I didn't even right? know that there were laws in regard to that. There are laws in regard to that, but no. uh, look, is it any surprise that he was a 19-year-old black kid? Black Not man, really. actually, is 19. So, I mean, I, I feel like, look, I go running sometimes, mm -hmm. and I always mm -hmm. run on the wrong side of the street. <laughs> I know it's a bad idea. I shouldn't You're do pretty it. pretty white, though. But, but I've never been hassled by the police. Mm -hmm. I, I've done it at the park. I've never been hassled by police there. Anyway, that's just anecdotal evidence. But yeah. it's just, I live in L.A., and I don't see it as a threat. Like, I don't see it as a problem if I ever did it. Maybe someone would pull over and tell me, hey, that's not a good idea, but it wouldn't result in four police officers on top of me punching me in the face. Yeah, one punching you while another is holding you in position to be punched. And the worst thing about this, what happened, I think, is that uh, obviously this wasn't like in the middle of the night. They tackled him. No one was around. As you saw in the video, people were watching and telling them not to. And if you're one of those bystanders who very likely knows that person, what do you do in that situation? You can't tackle the police to stop them from hitting him. Mm -hmm. You obviously can't do that. You're telling him not to punch him. They continue doing it. And it's not completely irrational to think that they might accidentally or intentionally kill him. I mean, we have... Very recently, I forget the name, but uh, uh, I believe it was a homeless man shot by police over 30 times. Yeah, Kelly it, Thomas. Well, there, there have been a number of times in recent months when the police have killed someone. And mm -hmm. so it's not irrational. And it, it's really, I don't know what's causing it. It might be that we're just noticing it more because the media is watching. We have cell phone videos and things like that. But it's, it's, it seems to be a growing problem. It is a growing problem. And I think that's part of the reason why law enforcement does not like us using our cell phones to record them when they're in the process of any type of arrest or anything like that. They don't want to be held accountable, which drives me absolutely insane. You are a public employee. You get paid by our tax dollars and we get to hold you accountable. If you are in a public place and you are doing something that we find a little shady, mm -hmm. we have the ability to film you and they're trying to pass laws to ban that from happening. Actually, let, let's help them out. I, I, for, I apologize, I'm probably going to get the name wrong, but there's an app that the ACLU uh, developed. It's, I think it's called Police Tape. And anyway, you can download it, you can turn it on your phone and it'll be, begin recording. And nothing shows up on your phone. And if the phone is taken, it automatically backs up the video to the ACLU servers in New Jersey. So if you are worried about potentially being in a situation like this or you want to help someone out that you might come across in a situation like this, look into the ACLU's app and you may actually be able to do some good. But what happens when they successfully pass these laws that would prevent us from doing it? We could potentially get locked away for wiretapping. Now, mm -hmm. Steve sent me that really interesting story that we did last Friday about um, that man who found oh, cop block which is a strange name, but copblock.org. Yeah. And uh, basically he put up this uh, videotape of school police beating up a 17-year-old student, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know what the student was doing. Apparently he was getting into some sort of argument or scuffle with his sister. And they used excessive force. Anyway, he got locked away for wiretapping. I'm not sure how that's wiretapping. Yeah, I don't understand how that's wiretapping either. I think I have an okay either. understanding of what wiretapping is. But do you see what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. feel as if if they push really hard, they can ban people from filming them. And I think that's unacceptable. They should mm -hmm. be held accountable for their actions. We, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be surprised by that. This is yeah. just a very low-level version of what the U.S. government and the British government are doing in regard to Julian Assange. They're going to try to protect themselves. We shouldn't be surprised when they do. Mm -hmm. But we then need to push back against the moves that they're making to stop us from reporting on what's going on.